This is the upcoming Sony Xperia Pro I, and the I stands for imaging because Sony is elevating this smartphone device to have a one inch camera sensor. And I'm personally really excited for this. Not only does this have a one inch sensor, but also a dual mechanical aperture, real time tracking autofocus with eye autofocus in both photo mode and video mode, 20 frames per second, no blackout shooting in photo mode, and video up to 4K 120 frames per second. On top of that, it can use a magnetic attachable external monitor for selfie vlogging. Just wow. Now, just really quickly, what I have here is a well-developed prototype, so not every single feature is available yet, but a majority of the really important ones are, and I'll do my best to demonstrate as much as I can. So let's start off with a look and feel of the device first. This is very similar to the recent Xperia 1 Mark III, if you're familiar with that device. It has a six and a half inch 4K HDR OLED display, which is not only really nice for content consumption, but also this massive real estate gives us more of the UI to work with when we're capturing and editing photos and videos. And much like how you would hold a camera or a smartphone to shoot, there is a dedicated embossed shutter button, which, a bit of an update, the feedback on this device now feels like the shutter experience you would get from an actual camera. So you're gonna get some really nice feedback when you half press to focus and a full press for the actual shot. And booting up to the Photography Pro app is very streamlined. Even in lock mode, all you have to do is just long press the shutter and poof, the app will automatically pop up ready to shoot. Nice. The volume keys are zoom rockers, obviously, and on the opposite end here, we have an easily removable SIM tray with optional expandable SD card storage in case the default internal 512 gigabyte memory isn't enough. Which honestly might not be if you love taking photos and videos on top of downloading all your everyday essential apps that you need to use. On the top, we have a headphone port which has been missing in a lot of smartphone devices nowadays. So thank you Sony for keeping this because this is actually incredibly helpful if we choose to use external microphones during video capture. Around the left corner here, we have a spot to attach a wrist strap in case you have butterfingers like us. And on the bottom, USB-C for charging and other types of connection opportunities. So as you can see, this isn't an update to the Xperia Pro that was released last year. That is still in a league of its own with that micro HDMI connection. The Xperia Pro I is designed more for advanced mobile photography. This device has triple camera array rocking Zeiss Tessar lenses, 16, 24, and 50 millimeters. Now, the real bread and butter of this phone is the 24 millimeter lens because this is the one that has a one inch sensor backing it up. Now, for those of you who might be wondering, in case you're not too familiar with camera sensor sizes, what's the big deal about a one inch sensor? Now, typically smartphones run with smaller image sensors because it makes sense. They're much smaller devices compared to an actual camera. As we move up in sensor sizes, we get better low light performance, better dynamic range, so a lot more control in your highlights and shadows, so you can see details in them, and more depth of view to play with, so more of that background blur. And the Xperia Pro I is meant to bridge that image sensor gap between smartphones and cameras. Sony literally took the same one inch sensor from the RX100 Mark 7 and placed it inside of an Xperia phone. And some of you guys might know how much I love my RX100 Mark 7. So to have some semblance and performance of my favorite camera in a smartphone device like this just gets me really excited because I've anticipated something like this. We've seen full frame sensor in an APS-C sized body and I was like, wouldn't it be cool to see an APS-C sensor in a point and shoot body and a point and shoot one inch sensor in a smartphone body and uh well here we are now to really take advantage of that one inch sensor sony included dual mechanical aperture so a choice between shooting between f2 and f4 and that f2 is really going to come in clutch when it comes to shooting in low light conditions and creating authentic bokeh so let's go ahead and jump into the Photography Pro app just to show you guys what this device is capable of because the mobile team here really worked closely with the imaging team to bring a lot of the features that we're familiar with from the Alpha mirrorless cameras to the Xperia. We have 315 face detection autofocus points with real-time tracking autofocus for continuous face and eye autofocus. We also have touch tracking autofocus, which is autofocus glue if you need to capture something that isn't a human face. And if you need to be shooting any fast moving subjects, this camera can do 20 frames per second JPEG burst with no blackout, which is pretty insane for a device like this. And they got that technique from the RX100 Mark 7 and the A9. 
and all these burst shots here came out sharp. The real time tracking eye autofocus is really doing its job, and a lot of these shots here taken on the 24mm have incredible details. And the other lenses are no slouch either. At the time of recording, the 50mm wasn't quite ready yet, so I can't wait to see what that looks like, but check out some of these shots with the 16mm. If you're already an alpha user, the UI is gonna feel very familiar to you. Even the menu system looks somewhat similar to the newly updated menu system that we've been using in their mirrorless line. And because they're taking mobile photography seriously, we have an option to shoot 12 megapixel RAWs. And we can directly import to apps like Lightroom CC for full control edits. We don't have to transfer to our computer and upload to the cloud just to access it. We can do it immediately after capture. Okay, so let's talk video now. They have a newly developed app called the Videography Pro app, which is meant to be a lot more user-friendly compared to their Cinematography Pro app, which you can still use for that Venice color science look. And the crazy thing is they will have eye autofocus and object tracking in video mode as well. It's not quite ready to be demoed yet, but in case you've never seen it in action before, it's gonna be very similar to what we have in the alpha cameras. But what I can show you is a little bit of that 4K 120 frames per second, which this device can capture natively. The footage looks great from a few samples that I've shot so far on a gimbal. And the 4K 120 does capture audio as well. And because the Xperia Pro I itself is an HDR display, I can shoot in HDR mode and get a full preview of the video as I'm shooting. Pretty neat. So the Xperia Pro I has a rear mono microphone that sits right above or to the side of the 24 millimeter lens. And right now there's a car that is going by. But what's nice about the rear mono microphone is because I'm talking directly to the mic, it's capturing me a lot better as opposed to the traffic that is going by right now. So the beauty of having a headphone jack is that we can still connect an external microphone option. We're currently using a wireless lav system right now. So how does this sound? We do have cars that are currently going by, but my voice is much more honed into this mic that is attached on me. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there will be an optional external vlogging monitor that will be available with the Xperia Pro I. And this will allow us to take full advantage of the one inch sensor for selfie photos or take it a step further, vlogging or live streaming because this technically is also a 5G device. The way that it works seems to be like a modular kit. We have the foam mount that has a magnetic backing to allow the monitor to stick on. And it looks like it'll be connected via a short USB-C cable. On top of the clamp, there seems to be a cold shoe mount to attach the mic and the mic can be connected to the monitor via a three and a half millimeter jack. So I'm speculating we can save our headphone jack on the phone for audio monitoring. And the Bluetooth this tripod grip looks like it will be compatible with the Xperia Pro I as well. On that note, while this can be our sole device, it's not meant to replace any of our alpha cameras, but rather they want to make this out to be an additional solution to content creation, whether it's social media photos or videos, live streaming, or just for the love of quality imaging. For Vivian and I, we do a lot of these photo and video reviews and tutorials, and we often capture behind the scenes to illustrate our point. And we're looking at this to potentially lessen the bulk that we would have to carry another bigger camera for behind the scenes. And if you'll remember, we love using the Xperia Pro for on-the-go live streaming. So we can't wait to do that again with the Xperia Pro I, especially with a one-inch sensor and that magnetic external monitor. The price for a device alone is $1,799 and the vlogging kit is sold separately for $199. So the whole bundle will be around $2,000. A high price tag for a high enthusiast ultimate smartphone camera device. Pre-order begins October 28th, I believe, and it will begin shipping mid-December. If you guys need more information about the Xperia Pro I, I will have all the links in the description box below. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.